So basically, there are two ways to program your code. One is synchronous and one is asynchronous. Let's take an example of a synchronous program. So here I'm going to set up a variable a and set that to 5. And I'll set up another variable p and set that to 10. Let's assume we want to get the sum of these two variables. So we'll go ahead and set up a function called getTotal. It'll take a and b as its parameters and then it'll return a plus b. Here, what we can do is we can say final total and call get total and pass in our a and b variables. Then we can go ahead and just print out our total. So if we run this code, as expected, we should get a total of 15. So when we're writing synchronous code, everything is running line by line, int a, int b, the total is run and then the total is printed. But what if we were getting this particular value from our server? So let's try and simulate a server request. Here, instead of immediately returning a plus b, let's assume our server takes two seconds to return this value. We'll use the future class that's built into Dart, which will allow us to delay our call by using future.delayed. It's similar to set timeout if you're familiar with JavaScript. Within this, you have to pass in a duration. In our case, we'll pass in seconds and we'll pass in two seconds. Then we have a callback, which is going to run after these two seconds. And then we'll return our a plus b value. Let's remove this line and pass in a return here. Now we're calling get total, but we're assuming get total is going to take two seconds to return our value. Let's see what we get when we run this code. So here you can see, instead of getting back a value of 15, we're actually getting back an instance of future. And then we have this dynamic type. So what is happening here? When we were running synchronous code, this value was being computed immediately. But now we're hitting our server. That is, we're delaying our call by about two seconds. So what is the value within this total variable? This total variable actually has a future. A future has only two states. Either it's uncompleted or it's completed. So as of now, when we're printing out total here, this is an uncompleted future. Because we call this method and we immediately stored the value. We didn't wait for the value in any way and then we printed it out. We can confirm the order of this working by actually printing a plus b here and then seeing the order in which the data gets printed. So here, instead of passing back a plus b, I'm going to pass in print a plus b and run this code again. You can see that first the instance of future was called, which is this line here. And then the value of 15 was called, which is this line here. We can also see that the data type return is now void instead of dynamic like it was earlier. So let's also fix that. So here we're returning a future and from that future, we're actually not returning any value. So the type here will become future void. If we were returning the value of a plus b, let's get rid of the print for now. We would actually be returning future and a type of int in that. Now in this current configuration, we can't really access total here and print it out. We do want the value of total. That's where async and await come in. We want to actually wait for the get total value so we can pass in this await keyword in front of it. But whenever we pass in await, we have to mark the function from which it's called as async. So here we pass in async. So now this function knows that there is some asynchronous code inside it. Till the time this function actually hits the await keyword, it actually runs all the rest of the code synchronously. So this portion is run synchronously. Then when it hits this await keyword, it knows that it's going to expect a future. So it waits for the future to complete and then pass the value back to total. So now if we run this, you see we get the value of 15 like we were getting earlier. So future as we've discussed is nothing but a value that's given to us after some time. It is used when we're using asynchronous operations and we know that it has either an uncompleted or a completed value. But we also need to catch any errors. So in order to do that, we can wrap this in a try and catch block. We say try and catch, pass in an error here, and then move these lines of code inside the try block. And if we get an error, we'll just print out the error. If we run this, for now, we should get back 15. But in case there was an error, let's try and throw an error from here. So let's say throw exception. Within this, let's just say unable to add values. Make sure that's closed out. I'm just going to move this to the next line. And now let's run this. 
we see that the error is caught and we can print out the error. So this is pretty much all there is in using async, await and futures in your app.